sir good morning am i audible yes ma'am okay fine is my screen visible sir sir is my screen visible okay thank you right i extend my warm welcome to each and every one of you to this virtual session by chalapati institute of technology guntur andhra pradesh today we will delve into the topic of innovation and startup ecosystem so before we just get into the introduction participants can anybody tell me what does this word innovation means you can just unmute yourself or you can just type in the chat box what does this word innovation means uh, sir please give uh, permission to the audience so that they can uh, just share their thoughts what does innovation means right yeah somebody says finding something new right any other views on innovation what does this mean mean okay implementation of new ideas right yes so yes the word innovation it means it is nothing but the process of we are trying to introduce new ideas or it could be new methods products or services that leads to positive change and improvement that is very very important and thanks for everybody who has shared your thoughts right see innovation it involves that we are creatively applying our knowledge or say no, technology or even resources why do we do that why do we need actually the innovation mainly one thing to address the existing challenges whatever we have or say we want to create novel opportunities so when we speak about this word innovation it can definitely range from incremental or say gradual improvements or even we can see some kind of disruptive breakthroughs right suddenly some kind of innovation it disrupts the market and it just creates new market niche and through this we see that it is reshaping our industries and societies then a startup ecosystem on the other hand it refers to nothing but the interconnected network of institutions organizations even individuals resources as well they try to foster nurture and support the growth of new and innovative businesses see a startup ecosystem it encompasses everything from educational institutions and research centers we have investors mentors incubators accelerators everything right so when we are speaking about incubators they are nothing but it is nothing but a startup incubator like it is very helpful hub for our new businesses means incubators they provide place to work or even it also provides us the experienced advisors if you are doing a if you are going up with a startup there are experienced advisors to, to guide you and they also give you classes so that you can learn important skills and incubators also help you to connect with other startup owners some incubators might also give you say some uh, money financial support to get your uh a uh, startup started so it's it's like a friendly booster for your business as in your early stages similarly we also have accelerators so an accelerator for a startup is nothing but uh, you can call it as a supercharged training program that means uh, a intense course that helps your new business to grow faster what these accelerators will do they'll give you advice 
they'll teach you important things they also introduce you to helpful people See, say if i'm just going with some new business definitely i need all of this right because i have to build my business step by step then in return yes accelerators they might also take some tiny bit of ownership in your company and it is also definitely as i told you like the incubators it is also like a boost for your startup's growth and we also have regulatory bodies especially when we are speaking about india we have mca ministry of uh, corporate affairs uh, because it manages the company registration governance in india we have sebi we all know about it securities and exchange board of india it regulates the stock market activities and it protects the investors we have rbi uh, reserve bank of india it controls monetary policy and it it just oversees the financial system stability then we have a gst council uh, goods and service tax council uh, this will manage the unified indirect tax system for our goods and services and um, other regulatory bodies like we have um, uh, dpiit department for uh, uh, promotion of industry and internal trade so it implements policies benefits what do we get if we are a startup right all this will come under your startup india initiative then we also have npci uh, national payments corporation of india it actually supervises our payment systems even including upi also comes under that then we also have um, uh, irdai insurance Reg regulatory and development authority of india this will regulate the insurance industry uh, it also includes licensing compliance and many more bodies are there for helping our startups then coming to innovation and startup ecosystem it is nothing but it refers to the environment and factors right what all will encourage and facilitate if i create a new business if i go come up with a innovative business startup so it is nothing but a uh, it is providing a uh, nurturing environment for all the entrepreneurs so that they can transform transform their innovative ideas into viable enterprise or scalable enterprises say when we are referring to this world innovation and startup ecosystem or the startup community uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem innovation ecosystem network everything we mean the same right it is nothing but the interconnected network that is collectively contributing to the growth development and success of our new business see just as a natural ecosystem what we have it involves various organisms and we see there are interactions within a specific environment similarly a startup ecosystem also involves various stakeholders and we also see their interactions within a particular geographical uh, or industry based space so we will learn about this uh, after a slide or two let us see what is the importance of innovation for economic growth as we all know innovation it serves as a powerful catalyst for economic growth and societal progress are we clear so far is my pace okay you can just give a thumbs up or if you are not understanding you can please type it in the chat box is the pace okay are you understanding audience okay fine thanks for the response right yeah first we shall discuss about boosting productivity how does innovation helps in boosting productivity so we all know innovation it drives improvements whether it could be when we are speaking about processes or technologies methodologies when we have some kind of innovation it is definitely leading to increased efficiency and productivity as well when i'm speaking about this i'm speaking across various sectors various industries it holds good for all the industries so in turn what will happen it also enhances the economic output it also enhances the competitiveness say for instance um the introduction of automation and robotics especially when we take a sector uh, manufacturing sector it has revolutionized the production process yeah, we all know about that uh, when we take an example like uh, tesla's giga factories we all know that it is the uh, large scale manufacturing facilities what they do they employ the advanced robotics advanced automation so that they are trying to accelerate the production of electric vehicles uh, their batteries energy storage products and all these it is resulting them in higher output and it is also reducing the cost so that is the beauty of innovation then it creates new markets 
right when we have uh, some kind of innovative ideas definitely it can open up entirely new markets new industries right it will generate fresh revenue streams and job opportunities as well see the rise of the smartphone industry is a prime example just think of how the advent of smartphones created an ecosystem of apps and services and uh, when we take the best example apple's iphone right it is not only it has revolutionized the communication but it also has given birth to the app economy do you agree yes so today app developers entrepreneurs they have built businesses around this ecosystem and they are generating billions in revenue just because of innovation then entrepreneurship and job creation i would like to say startups they are often at the forefront of of innovation see as they grow as the startups grow they create new job opportunities they try to employ diverse talents and they also try to contribute to the local economies so we can just say that startups are engines of job creation uh, you all would have heard of a company called 23 and me it is a biotechnology company in california so uh, what does this company do i'll tell you it actually helps you the individuals to understand about their genes and their health how do they do this they just try to conduct a simple test test so this company it was started way back in uh, 2006 by some smart people they what was their whole idea was they just wanted to use the science to give everyone a peek into their own dna right dna now how does this test work the thing is individuals they can take a small test at their home it is something like a diy science project do it yourself so then after you have taken your test the company will look at your dna and it starts telling about some interesting things about your family background and what would be based on your dna what would be your potential health risks now the whole point uh, behind telling this was how did this co particular company 23 and me uh, how did it help in job creation actually it had created so many posts they had science experts so they needed smart scientists who will study the genes and who will figure out what does these genes mean then they had people uh, who will be working with data data pros so people uh, who are just say great at numbers and they'll be looking at their gene data they'll try to find the patterns and clues they also had computer professionals so these tech wizards what they did uh, uh, they made special programs to show how your gene information can be get it in a simple way and they also created jobs for health guides so ex these were these were health guides were the experts who explained what gene results could mean for your health then they had a helping team these were nothing but the people who tried to answer their questions and they also helped other customers and they also hired people uh, to tell others about uh, what does this test mean and they tried in the, uh, from them they started the spreading the word and then they just tried to find new customers so this particular startup company it used science and technology to just make jobs for smart people do you understand how innovation and uh, startup ecosystem will uh, bloom right then attracting investment yes any vibrant uh, innovation ecosystem it definitely attracts investment from uh, many sources say we have uh, for example venture capitals just imagine you want to uh, you have a, a fantastic business idea but the thing is you need lot of money to make it big we all agree now a venture capitalist might come to the rescue what will they do they are they are just like our backers who will support us with super powers what they do they offer you money maybe in exchange for some part of your business like it could be ownership or part of ownership anything that that is uh, between you and the venture capitalist then the thing is we have a money partner so these venture capitalists they are a part of larger firms they try to invest they'll give you larger sums collectively so that you can definitely start your begin your startup then we have angel investors so as i told you just imagine that you have a cool idea for your business and you need money to make it happen 
Now, uh, angel investor might suddenly swoop in and they offer you the money you need. What they do? They invest their own money. In venture capitalists, I was telling you, they, they are a part of larger firms and they'll give you larger sums of money. Here, angel investors, they are trying to invest their own money. Okay. In return, again, they get a part of your business. So why do we call them as angel investors? They are some, somebody like a fairy godparents for our startups. And we also uh, can go ahead with the government funding. Then, so this influx of uh, capital from any source, it will help the startups to develop and also to scale our ideas or just to expand our business. See, innovative, uh, innovation-driven startups often attract if there is some kind of innovation, definitely they will attract significant investment. And uh, you all would have um, um, come across this particular company, SpaceX. SpaceX. It is an American uh, spacecraft manufacturer. It was founded by uh, uh, Elon Musk. It is a very good example. So the company's novel work, whatever they have done in uh, space transportation, exploration, all this actually through that, they attracted substantial funding, whatever they needed for their startup. And uh, it, it allowed it to develop revolutionary technologies. They started with uh, reusable rockets and they also had the potential to colonize Mars. Then global competitiveness. See, countries, nations that prioritize innovation, that give priority to innovation, they definitely tend to be more competitive on the global stage. And we all know about it. So they can adapt to the changing market demands. They can always stay ahead of technological shifts. They can also foster the sustainable growth. Say so we all know about South Korea. How do they focus on R&D, research and development? And definitely this has led to the emergence of companies like we know about Samsung, we know LG. They are the global leaders today, right? In technology and in consumer electronics. So their innovations, um, uh, it has not only captured international markets, but it, it has also significantly contributed to the country's economic growth. Then coming to the quality of life improvements. All right. So innovation, it leads to the development of products or even services that definitely will improve the quality of life of all of us, of the individuals. See, we have from uh, healthcare advancements to eco-friendly technologies. Using all these, innovation will definitely positively impact our society. Um, see, the development, you would have heard of the personalized medicine, something like gene therapies. So uh, these kind of therapies, they have potential to cure the previously untreatable diseases, which we were not able to solve or cure previously. Now, through these kind of medicines, personalized medicines, companies, you would have heard of CRISPR therapeutics. So they are pioneering this kind of gene editing technologies and they are transforming our healthcare outcomes. Surprisingly, innovation is helping us in all the ways possible, right? So we all have now understood that innovation is not only a driver of economic growth, but also it's a vehicle for positive change and it is for our societal betterment and also it is for the realization of our human potential. Then the startup ecosystem, it acts as the nurturing ground where these innovative ideas, they take root, they grow, they flourish, and they, they just contribute significantly to the economic transformation of regions of all the countries. Key elements, or we can call them as drivers of a economic startup ecosystem. What do we mean by key elements? They are nothing but the foundational components or resources which are all contributing to the growth, to the success and to the sustainability of startups, especially within a region or within a community. So they are technological advancements. See, new technologies, they often spark innovation. They try to create opportunities, mainly for new products, new services, and even if there are, say, some novel business models. Then universities and research institutions. These universities or research institutions, what we are speaking about, they are like centers of knowledge and innovation. 
they try to contribute how how do they do they conduct research they encourage creativity they also educate a skilled workforce and all this will drive to entrepreneurship ultimately then incubators and accelerators already we have discussed about this these are nothing but the programs or organizations that provide us the guidance mentorship resources and sometimes as i told you they also provide us the funding to startups at various stages they'll provide us and incubators they actually uh, nurture the early stage startups while when we are speaking about this accelerators they focus on um, uh, we can call it as fast paced growth say for more developed ventures is what they help then funding resources very very important for our startup right apart from our personal savings or the investment that is made by our friends family we also spoke about uh, angel investors venture capitalists uh, we also discussed about the accelerators incubators apart from this what are all the funding sources we have when we have a startup we can even go for crowdfunding what startups will do they can ask for a large number of people to contribute small amounts of money online in return what what will happen these backers who are all supporting this startup by investing or by contributing some small amounts of money they might get a product or a service or even some kind of some small ownership share from your startup then we also have bank loans right some startups they take out uh, loans from banks mainly to fund their operations they we all know how does it work they just borrow the money and they agree to pay it back with uh, with interest over a period of time we also have something called bootstrapping this means the startups they use the revenue generated by their own business and they'll try to fund its growth so the thing is they reinvest their profits instead of seeking some help from the external funding then we have uh, corporate partnerships sometimes what will happen big companies they invest in or they try to get partner with the startups because why do they do this they think that these startups they are offering some kind of innovative solutions and that is in alignment with this corporate partnerships or the business whatever that big companies are doing then uh, we also have uh, government grants competitions so some governments what they do they offer grants uh, subsidies or some kind of prizes to the startups why do they do this if at all your startup it is working on a project that is benefiting the society or that has come up with a new technology government will help you yes we will discuss about so many sources of um, funding i tell you one thing each funding source has its own pros and its own cons and the best choice which one which from which source should i take money it depends on your startup needs your goals and mainly on which stage your business is the stage of development of your business then co working spaces what do they offer they offer you the flexible work environments mainly for startups and entrepreneurs they try to provide you uh, cost effective office spaces they'll give you networking opportunities and also they give you a, a collaborative atmosphere to work with then networking and community see an active and supportive community of entrepreneurs we need mentors we need advisors industry experts all these people will support in knowledge sharing collaboration and exchange of ideas as well so we all must leverage the uh, importance of networking government support and policies just now we discussed about the same uh, the favorable regulations policies incentives all these from the government will definitely encourage entrepreneurship and people are ready to invest and also innovation then access to markets is it enough that we just start our business and leave it no we need access to potential customers right and markets so that we can validate and we can also scale our ideas and an ecosystem with strong industry connections will definitely facilitate this infrastructure and services so reliable infrastructure 
it could be transportation communication technology all these will definitely support the operational needs of the startups cultural attitude towards taking a risk and failure so an environment ecosystem that encourages risk taking and which views failures as the stepping stones rather than when we treat it as setback we all are we all will be, become negative mindset instead of that if we just view the failure as a stepping stones one can definitely contribute to a healthier startup environment events and competitions see events like hackathons uh, startup competitions uh, we have uh, networking meetups all these will provide platforms for the startups so that they can showcase what are their ideas they can also learn from others they can also gain exposure very important is the stages of startup development first we will start with idea generation and validation so this is nothing but the initial phase where entrepreneurs they identify the problems they look what opportunities do i have and what are the gaps in a market now here ideas they are brainstormed and they'll try to refine their ideas into a business concept then we'll go with the validation what do we mean by that that means we will have something in our mind we just want to test those assumptions and we also want to gather feedback so that we are ensuring that there is a viable market demand for our product or service you can go with methods like survey you can do surveys yes uh, you can go ahead with interviews or even you can go ahead with prototype testing uh prototype testing in the sense uh, you're just trying to uh, trying out a sample of whatever your new invention is there of whatever your idea is there you will just check with that small sample whether it is working well before you are make trying to make a final version you just check whether it is going on is everything well then all this will help you to validate your idea's potential so let's discuss of a example here i hope you all have heard of a company called airbnb which stands for uh, air bed and breakfast the founders there were actually, which is this, this company it is meant for um, home stays and experiences there were actually uh, three founders way back in 2007 they have shared their story whatever they have told i'll try to explain you explain it to you in brief uh, the three founders of airbnb they were actually living in uh, san francisco and uh, from their story they, they have said that they were actually struggling to cover their rent one day what happened they just noticed some kind of design conference was coming to their town in san francisco they see that all hotels were booked and attendees they were in need of accommodation what did these people do the founders of airbnb as a creative move they decided to turn their loft apartment into a, a, a makeshift bed and breakfast they offered them air mattresses and they also offered them the homemade breakfast to all those conference attendees who were in the town then what happened this kind of small and unconventional start it led to the ground breaking innovations and today we know how airbnb it has transformed the entire hospitality industry so that is the power of idea generation and validation then next stage once our idea is validated the next step is to develop the product or service what all this stage includes uh, we'll go ahead with the designing building and refining the offering whatever mainly we are trying to give to the customers to meet their needs so our product it should be delivering a unique value proposition or we call it as unique selling proposition usp that means what are the distinct benefits or qualities that my business is offering to my customers how does my product or my service differs from others or my competitors is the point and if at all there are any pain points one must address it then we can go ahead with iterative development what does this mean see instead of trying to make something perfect all at once we cannot do that also one can build or improve the product or service whatever you are trying to give step by step 
So we are trying to make it better with each round. Then we can also have feedback loops. What does this mean? You try to gather information about a process. And you use that information to make your process better. Right? All these are common during this particular stage of product development so that we are ensuring our product aligns with our customers' expectations. The same thing, uh, we shall discuss of example. You all would have heard of Slack Technologies. Slack Technologies, it is an American software company. And few of you, you might be knowing about its journey from a games tool to a communication revolution. Now, how did they start? This is an example I'm trying to give it for product development or service development. Now, Slack, it was first made by a gaming company called Tiny Spec. Mainly, they wanted to uh, help their team to communicate better when, when they are working on a game. Then, next step, what happened? The company actually realized that the tool, whatever they had made to communicate amongst their team, it was really very useful, mainly for talking and also for sharing the information. Then they started to, uh, they thought of changing something. What did they do? This is Slack technologies. They decided to stop making the games and they turned this Slack into a tool for all kinds of teams to talk and also to work together. Then what happened? To share its success story, people, they just loved how easy it was to use this Slack. Then it became famous for making team communication better it replaced a lots of emails and also uh, messy chats, which we usually do. So this was the success story of Slack technologies. Then coming to the third step, after developing a solid product, startups must focus on entering the market. And also they need to gain the initial traction. Mark in, uh, market entry and scaling. Now this stage, it involves creating a how do we go to market strategy? Then, how do we set the price? And also, how do we establish the distribution channels? Mm -hmm. See, as the uh, startup, it gains customers or it starts generating revenue, it can begin scaling. Scaling in the sense, it starts broadening or expanding its operations, any startup. Now, this will involve increasing its customer base. Definitely, they'll be entering the new markets. Right, they also will be increasing their production and also they'll be optimizing the processes for their growth. Now, Uber is a very good example. See, we can witness Uber's growth as from cars to much more. How did this Uber start? Actually, they started by giving uh, people uh, rides in their cars using a phone app. So, this began in one city, San Francisco. We all know about it. and since people, many people like this idea, Uber, it went to uh, many other cities in US of A at first. And then it also spread to different countries. Even in India, we have it. It is not just about the cars. Uber, Uber, they did not stop at cars. They started delivering food, Uber Eats, right? Have you ever tried it? Okay. And even they started renting bikes and scooters in some places. Definitely, while doing all these things, market entry and scaling, they had many things to learn and there were many challenges on their way. Sometimes there were rules to follow and there were other companies which were competing with them. Right. Uber, they learned and they changed to fit each place, each different place where they are catering their customers. The bigger picture here is Uber, it went from a riding app in one city to a big, big company in lots of places, offering different services just beyond just rides in different countries. That is the success. Yeah. And each of these stages, whatever the three stages we discussed, they are very critical for success of a startup. Just to summarize, I'll tell you, idea generation and validation, they ensure that startup is addressing a real need. Then product development, it brings the idea to life. Third stage, market entry and scaling, it will allow the startup to grow and also to capture a larger market share. So it is very, very important for entrepreneurs to navigate each stage. 
strategically and also to adapt to their changing circumstances mainly to increase their chances of building a sustainable and successful business that is very very important we have to sustain our business and we have to become successful it is not that we are just started as a startup and we'll be like this on a small small scale no no we have to be successful we have to be sustainable we have to scale our operations that is very very important what are the benefits of innovation and startup ecosystem economic growth right innovation it drives new products services industries all these will definitely lead to the increased economic activity and it also will improve the living standards job creation we already discussed that startups are the engines of job creation right they offer employment opportunities they also contribute to the reduced unemployment rates technological advancement see innovation definitely it paves the way for new technologies and these technologies it will be enhancing the efficiency it will increase the productivity and it will also give us a good quality of life then competitive advantage see businesses that innovate definitely they will gain a competitive advantage or competitive edge because they are offering unique solutions and they just stand out in the market then industry disruption see innovation it can just disrupt or interrupt the traditional industries because innovation is fostering creativity and it they are innovation is just redefining all the old traditional business models social impact innovations when we take when we speak about the areas like healthcare uh, education renewable energy or any other field they are definitely positively impacting our society and they are also through innovation we are trying to address the pressing global challenges global recognition strong startup ecosystems they'll attract international attention they'll attract investment from others they'll also attract talent so all this will boost a region's reputation as a hub or a center for innovation then so we just saw about the uh, benefits or advantages of innovation and startup ecosystem and these they are not completely free from shortcomings or restrictions there are also many challenges first and foremost financial risks yes many startups they face financial constraints and they even witness high failure rates so definitely it is making their investment risky then uncertainty what is happening if there is some in kind of innovation always its nature is unpredictability so the unpredictable nature of innovation can lead to uncertain or unsure outcomes we do not know whether there will be market acceptance or not so there is uncertainty then regulatory hurdles yes navigating the complex regulations compliance requirements all this can definitely be challenging to our startups especially when we are in a market where there is uh, heavily regulated industries say for example uh, let's discuss about a pharmaceutical or healthcare industry so what all if we have to uh, plunge into that business what all should i go through one has to have the drug approval process go through the this process they need to go with the uh, quality control there will be clinical trials advertising labeling and just giving an example of pharmaceutical and healthcare industry uh, they need to also think about their data privacy what about the medical devices uh, their pricing reimbursement and the licensing of mainly their uh, healthcare professionals their uh, hospital accredita accreditation all these will come into picture and much more than that definitely so it's not that easy to just jump into any business like that because there will be regulatory hurdles then competition yeah growing competition within startup ecosystem it might lead to saturation or sometimes it is really difficult in gaining the market mm -hmm. share talent shortage yes see finding 
and retaining the skilled employees is a common challenge for all the startups, especially uh, in the specialized fields which require specific knowledge, skills, expertise, and training beyond the basics of their broader industries like uh, neurology, aerospace engineering, uh, uh, forensic accounting, quantum computing, sports medicine, uh, cognitive psychology. It is very difficult for us to find or even to just retain those skilled employees. Then sustainability. Some startups uh, will definitely struggle even to reach profitability level. Then comes the next part is the sustainability or just they are trying to maintain growth over the long term. Scaling challenges. As these startups grow, they will definitely face operational challenges. They will face managerial challenges when they are trying to scale their business, when they are trying to expand their business. Intellectual property. It is very important for the startups to understand which types of IP, intellectual property, are relevant to my business. Based on that, I will take appropriate legal steps to secure and to manage my intellectual assets. <laughs> it could be my trademarks, uh, copyrights, patents, uh, trade secrets, industrial designs, domain names, licensing agreements, all these will come under my IP. It could be the confidentiality, uh, invention, open source licensing. So uh, protecting IP, intellectual property is very crucial for mainly for startups so that they can maintain a competitive edge. They can attract the investors. They can also secure their innovations. If we don't secure our innovations, what will happen? Others might exploit it without permission. Tomorrow they might claim it is my trade secret. This is my domain name. This is my industrial design. So we need to take proper legal steps to secure our intellectual assets. Government support and policies for innovation and startup ecosystems in India. What does this include? Startup India Initiative. This was launched in 2016. This initiative, it aims to promote and support startups. They provide us various incentives, uh, tax benefits, and also they have simplified the regulations mainly for startups. Then we have AIM, uh, Atal Innovation Mission. So this particular initiative, it promotes innovation, it supports entrepreneurship, mainly among students. They have established something called Atal Tinkering Labs. They have Atal uh, Incubation Centers. They also have Atal Community Innovation Centers. All this will help them. Then, Make in India. So this campaign, we all know about it. It encourages the startups mainly to manufacture their products in India only. Right? They'll be providing them with the incentives uh, like reduced tax rates, or some kind of improved infrastructure so that they can manufacture their products here itself. Research and development incentives. Government, it offers tax deductions uh, for expenses that are related to R&D activities, research and development activities. Then we have venture capital funds. See, various funds, they are set up by government to provide financial support mainly to startups. At different stages of growth, the government is here to help us if you are coming up with a startup. The relaxation of angel tax. See, the government has also introduced measures to ease the burden of angel tax, mainly on startups. Uh, government is trying to provide us the relief from taxation of share premiums. Then we have fund of funds. So government, it has established the fund of funds for startups. We call it as FFS. Fund of funds for startups. They are supporting the startup investments. They are trying to provide capital to the all the SEBI registered alternative investment funds. We call it as AIFs. Then ease of doing business. So what is happening here? Initiatives to streamline the business registration or to reduce the paperwork or even simplifying the compliance procedures so that they are making it easier for the startups to start and operate. Incubation and acceleration support. Probably this is the third time we are listening about this. You, by now, you, you should have understood that how important are this incubation and acceleration support for innovate, innovation and startup ecosystems. 
So government supports incubators and accelerators who are providing the startups mentoring or uh, who are providing them the infrastructure and also the uh, networking opportunities to startups. IP protection programs, yes, intellectual uh, property protection programs are also in place so that they'll help the startups with uh, uh, IP filing, uh, they'll help it with the protection as well as with the enforcement. Then Startup India Learning Program. This is an online learning platform which offers free resources. There'll be free courses and also content so that they'll be helping the entrepreneurs to learn about uh, various aspects of how to build a startup. That is our Startup India Learning Program. Then recognition of startups. Eligible startups, they receive a startup certificate. This is provided by the government. So this helps them to access all the benefits and also it is easing them the compliance processes. And these policies, all these policies, initiatives, uh, they showcase the Indian government's commitment because our Indian government it is supporting innovation. It is fostering innovation. It is nurturing entrepreneurship and also the growth of startups across various sectors. What are the future trends in innovation and startup ecosystem? We have something called AI integration, artificial intelligence. So AI, it will definitely continue to impact various industries because it enables us the automation, personalization. We can uh, make data-driven decision-making as well. Then sustainability and green technology. So startups which are focusing especially on clean energy, on sustainable products, environmental solutions, all this will play a significant role in addressing the global challenges. And very importantly, we have uh, health technology advancements. So health-focused startups, if, you are fo you are, if your startup is focusing on health, so this will leverage technologies. So we have many technologies, uh, like we have telemedicine. So that means, providing medical services, consultations, diagnosis, and even the treatment also remotely. How do we do this? By using the communication technology. It could be through the video calls, phone calls, messaging apps, or any kind of secure online platforms. Then we have, we all must be using this wearable devices, right? They are the small electronic gadgets that are just individuals, they wear it on their bodies, often something like accessories, right? This is basically to track various aspects of our health, uh, how is our fitness, and what about the daily activities mm -hmm. we are doing. We have smart watches, we have wristbands, and then we have smart glasses, we have smart rings, smart clothes are also there, right? And then we have uh, GPS tracking devices, we have child trackers. Then we were also speaking about personalized medicine. That means we are trying to tailor the medical care to the unique needs of each individual. Because whatever medicine I need, the same is not needed by you. So they are customized according to your unique needs. All this will definitely improve the healthcare outcomes. Then remote work solutions. So startups will develop tools and platforms uh, to enhance the remote work experiences, productivity, as well as collaboration. Then we have blockchain applications. See, beyond this cryptocurrencies, Startups will explore innovative use cases for uh, mainly this blockchain technology. Uh, it could be something like supply chain transparency or secure data sharing. We all know about blockchain, right? It is nothing but a secure and a uh, very similar to a digital ledger, transparent digital ledger. And it records all the transactions, whatever is uh, taking place. So each transaction, it will be added as a block to the chain. So we call it as blockchain. And it just creates a permanent record. And we cannot alter it also. Then biotech and biotechnology and life sciences. See, breakthroughs in biotechnology, gene editing, like what we discussed earlier, and healthcare innovations, all these will emerge from startups which are working in the uh, life sciences sector especially. Then space and aerospace innovation. So the commercial space industry will definitely see the continued growth 
and startups are also contributing to satellite technology, space tourism, exploration, and much more. Then, agri technology, agricultural technology, and food innovation. So, what is happening here? Startups will also address about food security. Uh, they also speak about sustainability challenges. We have many technologies like we have vertical farming, we have precision agriculture. Uh, they also address to alternative proteins. All this will come under the food innovation. Then financial technology evolution. So what is happening with this financial technology startups? They will expand into new areas. You all would have heard of decentralized finance or uh, we have digital wallets. Uh, we have many kind of innovative payment solutions. All these, they are providing innovative financial services and solutions. We are an AR. I may not have to explain anything because most of you are from um, uh, computer science background. So virtual and augmented reality. <laughs> Excuse me. So startups, they will develop immersive experiences mainly for entertainment, education, training. Also, they can conduct virtual events. Cybersecurity solutions. So with this incre increasing digital landscape, startups will focus on developing advanced cybersecurity technologies so that we can protect the data as well as the privacy. Impact on social entrepreneurship. So startups which has a focus on social impact, they'll continue to address global challenges. It could be something like poverty, education, healthcare disparities, right? Social impact is nothing but we just want to make our world a better place, wherein we are trying to create positive changes, meaningful changes. By this, we are trying to improve the lives of the people. And also, we are trying to contribute to the greater good. That is the social impact. Mm -hmm. So startups, which has focus on this social impact, they are trying to address all these kinds of global challenges. Then personalized learning and education technology. Startups will also revolutionize education mainly through the personalized online learning platforms. We also have adaptive learning technologies. Then smart cities and urban technology. Startups are also, they will contribute to the building uh, smart cities, mainly with innovations. Uh, we see in urban mobility, uh, infrastructure, sustainable urban planning, all this will come under this. 5G and connectivity. Yeah, startups will leverage uh, 5G technology mainly to create new applications, especially in the areas of IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, real-time communication, as well as the immersive experiences. Mm -hmm. So all these trends, they highlight the evolving landscape of innovation and startups. And they are driven by the emerging technologies. They also cater to the changing consumer behaviors. And there is also a need to address to global challenges. Startups which align with all these trends will definitely be well positioned and they'll be shaping the future and they'll make a significant impact. Right. To conclude, I would like to say innovation and startups, they are like seeds that can grow into strong trees. And innovation and startups will benefit everyone. Right. So to help startups succeed, what we must be doing we must work together and share our ideas. We shall make rules simple and easy. Teach people new skills and give startups money to grow. And, and one more thing, never be afraid to try new things. right? And we all can learn from the mistakes whatever we have made while inventing something. Yeah. Uh, now we shall have a Q&A session, question and answer session. Feel free to ask any questions or share your uh, views about uh, today's subject matter, please. Yeah, somebody is asking uh, me a question in the chat box. In government uh, support and policies, can are we eligible for all of those at once or only at once? Uh, can we take the advantage of those uh, programs? Uh, mainly in which state you are uh, leaving? Uh, what is the government policy? What is the state policy? And what is the central policy that is applicable to you? You can just go and check with them. Based on that, uh, they'll uh, give you the uh, 
uh, support that is needed. So the government will support.